making a queen's progress through Hindi cinema, my guest occupied the number one pedestal for two decades. A famed marriage and motherhood later, she retains the grace of a woman and the magic of a star. It's a pleasure to have a rendezvous with Hema Malini and her lovely daughters, Isha and Ahana Deol. Hemaji, it is so nice to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. You were born for stardom, weren't you? Mm. In a way, I'll say, because before I was born, only my mother decided what I should be. She, she, she decided that I'm going to be a girl and she'll make me a dancer, classical Indian dancer, and my name will be this. Hema Malini. Yes. So, Hemaji, was it hard living up to your mother's preset dream of you? I knew only going to school. Coming back from school, I'll be practicing either dance or music. Mm -hmm. It was uh, she who made me whatever I am today. She used to take me from one dance teacher to another, you know. She was not happy with some teachers. We were living in Delhi and that's where the place I started learning dance. But she uh, made my father transfer to Madras to improve my dancing career. And how did you feel about it? Uh, not naturally, not very happy because I want to play and play and play, you know. Yeah. But now I think of it back, it is all wonderful whatever happened. It was a blessing. It's a blessing, yes. Everything she decided for me. She used to dress me up and uh, some particular manner, you know, like how South Indian girls are similarly. But uh, being in Delhi, sometimes when I'm going out, um, some people used to make little comments like this is a madrasi girl going she used to say never mind why do you bother you are a south indian so what be proud of it. be proud about it mm. so putting oil and making that chotis and flowers she will put kajal in my eyes mm. <laughs> and the typical ghagra cholis and all even i think after coming into films i was like that for some time i started cutting my hair um, only after my first child was born Till the time I had a long hair, just like you. Okay. When did achieving success become your own dream? That started coming right from the first film, Sapno Ka Saudagar. I, I said, this has to be a big success, and I have to be a very successful artist. Whatever I'm doing, I must be the best. I used to train myself in front mm -hmm. of the mirror. I used to act mm -hmm. and see. But you have done it the best, because you worked in over 200 films. Yes. 70% of them were Silver Jubilee. Yeah. For most actresses, this would be enough. <laughs> Wait, what, what keeps you going? One should keep doing something. Otherwise, don't you think uh, one will start feeling you're finished? Mm. Film is not the only thing. There are so many other things to do in life. Even though when I was uh, busy in films, I continued my dances. And uh, now I'm busy with uh, film making, direction, and producing a lot of uh, stage plays, ballets, and all that. Himaji, very few people know that you discovered Shah Rukh Khan for the, for the movies. I liked him in uh, two of his television serials, which uh, those days it was running. So I got the telephone number and I rang him up. And for first, I think, few days he was not believing that uh, I'm calling him. <laughs> <laughs> he just uh, took the telephone number and then he called back. Mm. And then I spoke to him. He was very nice. He said he'll come and meet me after two days. What was that little something you saw in him that made you feel that he has the potential to be a star? I think he had everything to be a star. I called him home and I showed Dharamji also, see, this is the boy I'm going to take. Mm. He said, yeah, yeah, he's very nice, take him. <laughs> Himaji, from the glamorous superstar, you transited to the senior category with a lot of ease. Was it as easy as it appears? Yeah, in the uh, Indian film industry, what happens, the moment you get married, they make you the mother. Yeah. Just the previous day, maybe you were working with a hero, and next day after, the, after you're married, you're going to work as his mother. Is it unbelievable? Yeah, this is what happens here. So they used to offer me immediately, Jitendra's mother, this, that, all that thing. <laughs> Amitabh Bachchan's mother, <laughs> with whom we are really... No, uh, not yeah, Amit Ji's mother. I, I mean, I mean, see, you know, they are very clever. They'll say, um, is the role uh, he's going to play father and son. So he'll be the 
go starring the father. So <laughs> naturally, I had to become the mother of the younger one also. No? <laughs> True. So it used to be very funny. I said, I don't want to do. Mm. I did few films, but I, I was very, very uncomfortable. I said, not anymore. I don't want to do it. Yes. Mm. If anybody wants to make a film as I am, what I am looking today, it's most welcome. But the role should be centrally focused on me. Mm. But uh, no need to do mama's role. But they only do that with the, with the females, with the heroines. Yeah, only with the heroines. <laughs> Not with the heroes, that's right. <laughs> Very unfair. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember even when I was 21 or something, uh. I was offered uh, roles opposite. I mean, amazing people who are double my age and I had to play their mother. And they say all these kind of things, oh, but then you're regal and you're serious. Yeah, all those things they'll say. And one more thing they'll say, you know, is, is Mother India type of role, you know. <laughs> the first thing, the moment they say Mother India, I know what role he's <laughs> coming with. I said, no. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Well, the Dharam Hema team was a super hit on screen and yeah. off it too, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where did you first meet Dharam Jean? What, what did you think of him? I met him first at uh, the premiere of one of the films. And uh, I felt, I thought yeah, I had never seen such a handsome man in my life. Mm -hmm. you know? So handsome he was, so good looking. And I heard him saying the same thing about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you started working together and then I got the opportunity to work with him and others. When you got to know him, when you started working with him, what appealed to you about him? He's a very loving, affectionate, mm. um, soft-spoken person. Mm. These are the qualities I like. I was working with so many heroes, but I always used to look forward to the shoot, do the shooting with him. I mean, that was the attraction. Mm. I mean, even in a shooting, in a, in a shot, if he has to hold my hand, it will be with so much care and tender, you know. Mm. <laughs> so you feel nice. So um, how long did it take before you started getting... Oh, it took very long time, so many years and years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> many years of working. Did you try and resist him because you knew he was already married? Yeah, so I never bothered in the beginning, mm. not at all. I mean, he was very handsome. I mean, mm. anybody can uh, say that. He's a very good-looking man. That doesn't mean that you have to marry that person. So like that, I continued working with him, but uh, with not at all with any intention that I'm going to marry this person. Mm. But somewhere in my mind, I used to think, uh, if at all I marry, I must marry somebody like him. Mm. Not him. Mm. Definitely not. But it happened, so you mm. can't help it. True. Because, uh, Himachi, I remember a time, at that time, you, you received so many marriage proposals. <laughs> Business houses, doctors, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> and your co-stars. Mm. What did Tharamji do to win your, win your love? You see, naturally, all these proposals will come because I was single, I was successful, I was a... Uh, uh, top star at that time. So well, he, he cannot say anything about that. Mm. But he constantly used to say that he loves me a lot. Mm. So I used to say, okay, okay. <laughs> I never used to give him much, uh, um, what do you call, a lift, mm. knowing the whole consequences. Well, it's difficult for a girl to resist so much charm. That's it. <laughs> See, we are, we are busy working films, yeah. continuously or doing two to three shifts. And uh, naturally, but working with the same person, we are shooting in Bombay, we are going for outdoors. So it is but natural to get involved. So what convinced you then that he is the right man for you? It is destined like that. So he's the right person for me. Because at the time when you married Dharamji, it created quite a stir in the industry, if you remember. <laughs> um, it was a very bold and courageous step to take. Did you have a lot of family opposition? And naturally, no parents will like me to marry this kind of a marriage. 
uh, but uh, there was it was difficult to decide any other thing for me meaning because uh, i was uh, quite close to him quite uh, you know we were together for so long mm. so now suddenly to think of somebody else i want to marry i don't think it was right mm. so i called him and i said you have to marry me now really yeah he said yeah i'll marry you so that is how it happened <laughs> Were you at all scared of what the media would have to say? Did that worry you? No, not at all. No. I have been working continuously worked in films for so many years. At one point I really got started mm. getting fed up of uh, going into the studio, putting the makeup became so, you know. Mm. I was not happy. So you wanted a different thing in life, different you wanted to settle down. Uh, I mean that kind of a stage I reached. So I decided So I gave uh, my told my people also that uh, if you can find somebody fine it is good but they were not able to get anybody mm. maybe even if he, if they had I don't think I would have accepted you would not have accepted yeah. <laughs> but sure. I have to say that to my family yes. right yes that's right you know himaji uh, many women in your place would have tried to take up the complete the total importance in a man's life but you never did that You never tried to compete with his other family for his time and attention. No, not at all. See, in love, you are only supposed to give. You cannot demand things. So you love the person so much, and you have got so much love from that person. So how can you torture a person just for these small petty things? That that's the reason I never bothered, I never irritated him, never tortured him. I I want the love to continue. so that is how it is till today we love each other so much mm. so nothing can come in between us i understand his problems so uh, i adjust everything according to him for which he loves me more so when i give so much you get so much so love is that you have to give respect to this love you don't have any resentment or jealousy in your no, heart no no not at all I can see you don't. No, not at all. That's why I'm the happiest person today. I think that's quite amazing, Himaji. <laughs> you know what I mean? To do it so gracefully. Yeah. I think one should be like that. So what's the point in see you love the person so much and after that you start torturing him? Yeah. That is not love. Love is gone out of the window then. <laughs> Did you both discuss this in the beginning when you got married? that how it's going to be no we never discussed all this you just just let it go and you yeah. you accepted it right yes, at the beginning just like that yeah you were traditional enough to want marriage and children but at the same time you have a very strong independent streak yeah because you run your own household you run your career you bring up your children and for one person to take charge and to cope it's quite i think everything has got its own time so i'm able to give proper time and look after everything well and yet you also said that the support of a spouse of a husband is a must just to take few decisions regarding children that is the only thing because you don't want to go wrong anywhere mm. so that's the time you need uh, his support and he's always there to give all the support whenever he's in bombay he 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 sees that uh, comes to see the children he he's with them and uh, ask about what are they doing in their studies and if he sees them in a dresses he is very particular he likes them to be always in salwar kameez <laughs> so my daughters you know the moment he is coming they will wear salwar kameez and come <laughs> and then the moment he goes back to jeans <laughs> back to jeans i mean he doesn't mind jeans and all but uh, he prefers the salwar kameez so i tell them that he likes it so wear it like that what he wants He's very traditional as a person. He's very much conservative. Yes. Uh my stage performances he hasn't seen yet any of them. Why? Though it is so popular all over. Why? He feels I look very different on the stage. So he feels that I don't belong to him. I look very different some from somewhere else. So he doesn't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Himaji, would you have liked it any other way? Like which way? Is it Are you happy? That's the main thing I want to know. You're happy. 
You can't see in my face? Absolutely. And I'm, I, but I want to hear it from you. I'm very happy because, see, I'm able to do so many things. Yes. You have... If it was a different kind of a relation or kind of a marriage, as it said, I don't think I'll be doing all these things. Whomever I, am, I would have married, he would have stopped me doing all these things. Maybe I'm settled down somewhere in America somewhere. Doing nothing, driving a car and taking the children to the school and coming back. You would never have had this freedom. I don't think so. I'm having so much freedom. I, I thank God for getting a person like him, such a wonderful person, and able to do so many things. Well, I think he's also very lucky. Come, girls. Girls. <laughs> this is Asia. That's Ahana. Hi, lovely to see you. Lovely to have you here. Now, one of you sizzles and one of you giggles. <laughs> Which one? She giggles. <laughs> yeah? So you spend your time in cyberspace, do you? At home, we have a computer, but when we go outside with Mama, like when you're in London or somewhere, we're all the time at cyber cafe. I send mails and there's ICQ chat and all that. How did you learn? Through our friends and I mean everyone was in it too and we managed to get into it. Did you teach mom? We were teaching her still. <laughs> <laughs> and you were 17? Yeah. You're 14, uh -huh. yeah. Studying? Yeah. Bunking classes? Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. What do you mean by not exactly? I mean sometimes she feel like so I allow her to do that. Just once or twice, not otherwise I'm quite strict with her. Teacher will see it from school now. <laughs> <laughs> but you used to bunk dance classes, didn't you? <laughs> hmm? No, I don't bunk right now. I can't bunk because every time the master comes home, everyone's sitting downstairs. So they immediately inform Mama that the master's come. I can't send them away also. <laughs> no, not that. Actually, you know, when I put them together, they used to giggle and laugh and the teacher used to run away. So then uh, now I stopped them. I made her separately learn and this one is learning separately. But uh, how do you feel when you perform with your mother? I believe you're, you're as naturally talented as she is. I've never feel, uh, felt nervous or anything because uh, since I was a kid, Mama used to make me dance with her when she had her ballet. But later on I started dancing on stage and I felt really nice about it because people start to appreciate you much more. and. Mm. Um, even my teachers, like in school, they used to be like very naughty and all, but then once they started seeing me dance and all that, they were, had a total different image about me. <laughs> 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 and what about you? I'm more into sports than dance and all. Which sports? Mm, football, handball, and throwball and all this. So you're the outdoor type? Like, yeah, I mean, she's like interested in sports, but... So Isha, are you going to join films like your parents? Um, I am interested, but it all depends on what my father has to say about it. Haven't approached the subject yet? I did once, so he said, no, not at all. Because right from the birth, he used to say, make a dance and all anything, it's okay, but not films. How are you going to manage him? <laughs> Slowly. I don't want to upset him or anything. It depends yeah. on whatever he says, but I try and ask him slowly, but not rush it up and all that. Because mm. he gets angry then. Does he get angry? He doesn't get angry, but he's very... Um, Upset. He's very possessive about us, so he's mm. like girls who have to sit at home only and, you know, the Punjabi type of thing. So we're also not allowed to go out that often, but Mama is there, so we managed to go for sports and all. Even for our sports, like we had to go for state mm. levels outside Bombay. Out station. Yeah. So, so he used to object. He said no. You didn't go? No, I didn't go. <laughs> mm. He's really concerned about whatever we do and all that. Very mm. protective, actually. Like, you know, he doesn't like us wearing sleeveless tops and short pants. So whenever he comes home, <laughs> we, like, sit in trousers or in a salwar kameez or something. They like to wear modern dresses. Mm. I mean, to some limitation, I allow them to do so. At the same time, they have to be in the traditional dresses also. Yeah. So like that in many ways also, I'm, I'm the bridge between the two. But tell me, 
You being the elder, are you bossy? Until you tell me you should bossy. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> no, I mean, we keep fighting like, like normal sisters, we fight every time and I keep, I like teasing her a lot because she gets irritated really soon. <laughs> She hits me one whack she leave as like as good as Papa hitting someone really strong. <laughs> <laughs> she only hits you tell irritate her and straight one whack on your face and I'm not allowed to hit her. Yes, she's a baby. Little <laughs> baby. So you whack your sister? Yeah. <laughs> Very so proudly saying it, Anna. Huh? <laughs> saying it so proudly, yeah. <laughs> but um, do you listen to her at all? Sometimes when she makes sense. <laughs> no, I mean when she has some problem in school and all, which she can't talk to mama about like a few things. She comes and she talks to me, so in that way we're like more like friends also. Mm -hmm. And she listens to me when I tell her things uh, concerning school life and all that. But you're protected towards her then? Yeah, very. <laughs> Who are you closer to, Sunny or Bobby? We're close, close to both, but um, we manage to meet Sunny Bhaiya more often. Mm. Because when we go abroad, when we go to London, like, we meet him out there and we spend a lot of time with him over there. Bobby Bhaiya comes over sometimes, but um, we manage to spend more time with Sunny Bhaiya. I've never met them. Very nice boys. So, uh, how, how different are they? Uh, no, uh, Sunny is more like father. Just like Papa, Dharamji. Hmm? Mm. Even his uh, behavior, yeah. his uh, way of talking. I can see a lot uh, of uh, dharam in him. Okay. He's a very nice boy. Yeah, and how's Bobby? Is he fun? Yeah, he's a young guy. That's why I think mm. he's very different. Who brings you nicer gifts? Sunny Bhaiya. <laughs> <laughs> he got me amazing shoes, like get Nikes and all, because I used to love playing. So every time I'll go and ask him, like, I want a pair of Nikes, and I have many of them, like, in my cupboard, all given by him. Bobby Vajani gets us all discs, man, and walk, man, you know. Okay. But you three are like uh, sisters, aren't you? <laughs> There's no generation gap, is there? Yeah. I make them feel like friends. I tell them to talk to me anything you want. They should tell me anything. They look like very sensible girls. <laughs> very good girls. You both are very good girls. <gasps> you know, they say that for a mother, when her daughters start growing up, it's like she's living life all over again. Yeah. through them. Yes, exactly. Well, girls, I hope that you grow up to be as graceful and as successful as your mother. And I think it's been such a pleasure having you over here. I wish you all the best of luck. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for this rendezvous. <laughs>